My name is Jen and today I'll be showing you how to make a pet blanket with both knit and crochet options. If you want to jump to a certain part of the video, timestamps will be listed in the description box below. Before we begin this tutorial, let me give you some more information about this project. To celebrate our National Library summer reading theme of Tales and Tales, Clearwater Public Library Youth Department has partnered with the Pinellas County Animal Services Center to provide handmade blankets to pets awaiting their forever homes. I recommend a 20 inch square blanket, but any size will do. You can drop off your completed blanket to either the Pinellas County Animal Services Center or to the Clearwater Main Library second floor youth desk. The cutoff date for this project is August 8th, 2021, but if you finish a blanket after August 8th, you can still take it to the Pinellas County Animal Services Center as a regular donation. If you want to share photos of you, your blanket progress, or your pets, please use the hashtag, hashtag Clearwater Library. And finally, thank you for helping us bring comfort to as many shelter animals as we can this summer. Let's get into the tutorial. First, I want to show you the materials you'll need. You can use any size of yarn for this project, but make sure to check the label for a few things. The most important thing to look for is that your yarn is 100% acrylic. This will make the blanket very easy to clean and also very durable. Once you have your acrylic yarn picked out, take a look at the recommended needle and hook size. Since we're making pet blankets, I like to go one or two size bigger than what is listed. This will make my stitches a little looser and make the blanket a lot more squishy and snuggly. It's up to you if you wanna do this too, but I wouldn't recommend going any smaller than the recommended needle or hook size. It'll make your fabric way too thick and hard to work with. So I'm gonna show you a few different um, yarn types and sizes that I have here and how to read the labels and what to look for. So this is the Big Twist Value Yarn. This you can get um, mainly at Joann's Craft Store. Um, I like this yarn for this project because, as you can see, it says right here, 100% acrylic. So right off the bat, we've got ourselves an acrylic yarn, which, like I said, very easy to clean, very durable, perfect for pet blankets. Um, it's a little bit soft, but not too soft, so it should hold up well. So now what we want to look for is our recommended hook and needle sizes. So here we find these little boxes. So the box on the end with the number inside of the little drawn on skein tells us our yarn weight. And then the box with the needles and the hook is going to tell us our recommended needle and hook size. So for this one, our recommended needle size is going to be a size eight or a five millimeter. And our recommended hook size is an H or a five millimeter. This yarn will be perfect for a pet blanket. You can also use some pretty yarn like this. So this type of yarn bundle is called a cake. You can tell it's wound in a different way than the skein is. So here is our yarn label. It's on the side of the cake. This is the Lion Brand Mandala yarn. You can get this at any big name craft store, including um, some super Walmarts also have Lion Brand yarns. So over here you can see our information is listed a little bit differently, but right here you can see 100% acrylic, so this would be good. And then our little boxes are over here. So here's our yarn weight, and then we have our recommended needle size, which is a five, because this yarn is a little thinner. And then our recommended hook size is an H again. So the Lion Brand Mandala yarn would also work because it is 100% acrylic. It's just a little bit thinner than our Big Twist yarn. So another option, if you want something that will work up really fast is to use chunky yarn. So as you can see, the yarn is thicker than the others. This is Lion Brand uh, yarn again, wool ease thick and quick. So we're going to look at our label on our skein. Start twisting it until we find the information we need. So right here we have what our yarn is made of. It is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. So you would think, oh, that's not going to work. It's not 100% acrylic. But if you look further down, machine washable and dryable. That's what we really, really want. So this would actually work even though it's not 100% acrylic. Um, it is mostly acrylic though, so that is perfect. So here we have our yarn weight. It is super bulky, which means it's fatter than the other ones. Um, our recommended needle size is a 13. 
and our recommended hook size is an N. So you're going to be using much bigger needles and hooks with this thicker, chungier yarn. Now let's talk hooks and needles. If you wanna crochet a blanket, you will use a hook. If you are knitting, you will use needles. But regardless of your craft, hooks and needles all come in a variety of materials, sizes, and colors. What you use will depend on your preference. Let's talk about hooks first. Here are some examples of different hook types. So to start out with, we have an all metal hook. This is a size J. Can you see on the, this is a size J, um, which is what I used to crochet this blue blanket. Um, so this is your basic starter hook. You can find it at all craft stores. Um, it's gonna cost you a couple bucks. This is the Boy brand, B-O-Y-E, and it is what a lot of people get started with. However, if you want to pay a few extra dollars for some comfort, I prefer these types of hooks. They're from Clover brand, and they have a squishy handle, which makes it much more comfortable to hold, especially if you're going to be crocheting for long hours, as you might be with this blanket project. So these come in different um, sizes and also materials. So both of these hooks have the squishy handles. Um, however, the blue hook has a metal hook part and the pink hook has plastic hook part. Um, whichever one you prefer really just depends on you and your preference. I don't mind using either one, but today for our examples, I will be using um, the squishy hook with the metal on it. So this is also a size J and you can see on the end here, it is emblazoned with the size. Knitting needles are a little more complicated just because you're dealing with two of them at once. There are straight needles and there are circular needles. Both take the exact same steps to use, but the circular needles are just two straight needles connected with a cord. So it's up to you which kind you would like to try. There are also lots of different materials that needles can be made from. Metal will be the most sturdy, but it is also the hardest on your hands if you're knitting for long periods of time. If you get hand cramps and pains, try working with um, wooden or bamboo needles and see if that helps. The size of the needle will be engraved either somewhere on the needle itself or on the bottom if you're working with the straight needles. Usually the circulars will say on the packaging what size they are. So here are a few examples of different knitting needle types and let me go over them really quick with you. So first we have our straight needles. These are um, a metal type. They're also from the Boy brand, B-O-Y-E, just like our metal crochet hook was. And um, these are kind of a shorter size lengthwise. Um, they come even shorter than this or they can come even longer. If you're going to be using straight needles to knit your blanket, I would recommend getting a longer pair. So for the straight needles, like I said, to find your size, you're going to be looking on the bottom of your needle and, oh, and it should be emblazed with, sometimes it has the brand, I think this one says uh, boy on it, but then also the size. So this is a size eight needle, so it has a number eight. Uh, my preference for working on these blanket projects are the circular needles, which as I said, are basically just two straight needles and then they are connected by this cord. So this once again is the Boy brand, B-O-Y-E, and they are metal needles. So they make a clicking noise when you work. Some people are annoyed by that. So these needles, if you see, don't say anywhere what size they are, but on the packaging when I bought them, it did say they were a size 10. Here are a pair of bamboo needles from the Clover brand. And you can see right up here, it says 16 inch. That's how long the cord is going to be. And then a number 10. So this is a t size 10 circular needle. They're just made out of the bamboo material, which I prefer as it's much easier on my hands. Let me open this up and show you what they look like. All right, so here are our bamboo needles fresh out of the package. Um, as you remember on the packaging, it said size 10. And the nice thing about these Clover Takumi needles is that they are actually engraved on the needle with what size it is. So it does say 10 right on the needle. So you'll never forget if you lose that packaging. All right, so to get started with our crochet tutorial, I'm going to be using our J size hook and I'm using 
the Big Twist Value Yarn, which if you remember is 100% acrylic. So the first thing you're going to do is find the end of your yarn. I like to pull from the center, but there's also an end from the outside that's easy to unravel. So once we have the end of our yarn, our first step is to make a slip knot. So starting with crochet, it's nice because the slip knot is the most convenient knot to use, but if you're not comfortable making a slip knot, you could just use a regular old knot. Just make sure it's not too tight. So what you're going to do first, mind the, the end of your yarn and you're going to hold it with your thumb inside your palm. Fold down your last two fingers so you've got a peace sign and we're going to wrap our yarn around our peace sign so it overlaps here. Take the side that is attached to your ball and come around back side of your peace sign underneath and you're going to just, let me see, push it through so you have a little loop. Grab your loop, pull it up, and then take away your peace sign. Ooh. Pull your little tail and you have this really stretched out knot. So what you're going to do is put your hook right inside the loop Pull your tail. I'm pulling the side that is still attached to my ball. And as you see, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And now it is a slip knot. So the nice thing about a slip knot is that you can loosen it or tighten it however you need. So this is especially helpful if you need to restart these few stitches a few times, which is totally okay. Next, I'm going to teach you how to make a chain. The chain is the foundation stitch of crochet. This is how we're going to start off. You can hold your yarn however is comfortable for you, but I'm going to show you what works for me. I take the yarn that is attached to my skein and I'm going to go over my first finger, under my next two fingers, and then over my pinky. And for me, that is the most comfortable way to hold my yarn. So it ends up looking like this as I'm working. So you see over the first finger, under the next two, over the last one. And basically all that pinky finger does is help give me some control. So to make our chain, what we're going to do, have your knot on your hook and we're going to do a yarn over, which just means you're going to take the, the yarn over your hook. Did you see that? Take the yarn over your hook. You're going to hook that new little loop with your hook and pull it through. So you're pulling the old loop off of your hook. So we made one chain. So we're going to do a yarn over, so put the yarn over your hook, hook your new loop and pull it through the old loop. And we made a chain. Yarn over, hook the new loop, pull it through the old loop. So the nice thing about chaining with crochet is that with your blanket, you can just chain a whole bunch and then lay it against a yardstick and that will kind of let you know about the rough size of your blanket. You don't have to do any kind of crazy counting. All right, so with the stitch pattern I'm going to teach you, you need an even number, oops, Sometimes it's kind of hard to do that yarn over. You need an even number of stitches. So I'm going to do a few more chains. All right. So here we go. We have a chain of chains. And the way that you're going to count them is each chain makes a little V. So starting from your hook, you're going to count each V all the way back to the beginning. So we have one, well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have an uneven number. I'm going to make one more chain and then we'll keep going. 
So one more chain makes 16 chains for my little sample. Remember, all you need to make the kind of blanket that I have right here is an even number of chains. For this blanket, I did 70, but it's up to you however many you wanna go. Just make sure it is an even number. All right, so our next step is how do we turn this chain into an actual piece of fabric? Well, we're gonna have to keep building on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain one more, and then we're going to turn. So the way that you turn your work, so this is the side we were working on with all the little Vs. So we chained one and we're just going to turn it. So we literally just turn it over and start working the other way. So this is gonna be the hardest part of what we're doing today. If you can get this part down, this first row down, then you're gonna be good to go. So for our first row for this pattern, we're going to do single crochets all the way across. I'm going to show you how to make a single crochet. So to do a single crochet, we are not going into this very first loop right underneath our hook. We're going to go into the next loop. So we're going to just go right into the top loop. So you just put your hook right through. You see there's two loops on my hook now. We're going to do a yarn over. So remember, we put the yarn over the hook. We're going to take that yarn over and pull it through that loop. So we have two loops again. We're going to do one more yarn over. So we have three loops now. And you're going to pull that yarn over through all of the loops on your hook. So you only have one left. All right, we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna go into our next stitch, which is gonna be this guy right here. Can you see? So you see not the part that's pulling up because that's what we just did. So we're gonna go right into the next one. So we just go right into that top loop. We're gonna do a yarn over, pull it through that first loop, two loops on the hook. We're gonna do another yarn over and we're gonna pull it through both of those. So we only have one, hoop, one loop on the hook after doing each stitch. So let's see, we're gonna do one more together. So we're going to go into this top loop. Oh, sometimes they're a little tight. We're gonna do a yarn over, pull it through the first loop. So we have two loops, yarn over, and then pull it through both. So you only have one loop when you're done. All right. Uh, let's do one more just to make sure. Uh, so we're gonna go into the top loop of the next stitch and see, we're not gonna do this part. That's what we just did. We're gonna go into the next stitch, the top loop. So we got the top loop. We're gonna do a yarn over, pull it through the first loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, whoops, yarn over, and then we're gonna pull it through both. So I'm going to go ahead and do one single crochet in each one of our 16 stitches, and then I will come back to you. All right, so now we're all the way at the end. I have one stitch left, which is our knot. So I'm going to go ahead and do one single crochet into that stitch. So now we have one single crochet in each one of our 16 stitches. So if you want to double check, you can count the little V's across the top. Each V is one stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 V's. So that's good. We didn't drop any stitches. We're doing good so far. All right, so now we're at the end of our row and we are going to chain one. So remember, yarn over and then pull it through. And then we're gonna turn our work. So at the end of each row, you're going to be turning your work. So we did one chain and now we turn the work. And we just readjust. So remember, you just turn it right over. 
So for our second row, we're going to start doing our pattern. We're going to do one single crochet. So we're not going to do this loop that is right underneath. We're gonna do the next one. So not this first one. I'm going to go into this second V. And you see I went through both of those little Vs. Yarn over, pull through. Two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through both. So I did one single crochet. Now what we're going to do is one chain. So yarn over, pull through. We're going to skip the next stitch. So skip this V and we're gonna go into this V and we're going to do one single crochet. So I go into the V, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. So as you can see where we did our, our chain and then skip one, we have a hole. That's good, we want the hole. So now, let me get some more yarn. So what we're going to do next is just keep going. We're going to do one chain, so yarn over, pull through, skip the next stitch. So in the second stitch, we're going to do a single crochet. So go through both of those little Vs, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. So you're going to have a stitch and then a little hole. Do you see our little holes? So I'm gonna do one more with you. So we're gonna do a chain, so yarn over, pull through. We're gonna skip the next, oh, <laughs> sorry. We're gonna skip this next stitch and we're gonna go into the second stitch. So go through both of those Vs, yarn over, pull through yarn over, pull through both. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this row and I'll meet you at the end. So chain one, single crochet all the way across. All right, so when we get to the very end, we're going to have one stitch left. You're just going to do one single crochet into that stitch. So we're ready to turn. We've done our pattern all the way across. We're going to chain one, and then turn, loop. So now, we're going to be working a little bit different. So we're not going to do the first, the, the, the loop right after the hook. We're going to go into that first stitch with a single crochet. And now we're just gonna continue our pattern. We're going to do a chain one. And then that very first hole, you're going to go into the hole and make a single crochet. So like I said, those first few ones, that was the hard part. We're on easy street now. So we're going to do a chain and then find the next hole. So here's my next hole. I'm gonna go into the hole and I'm going to make another single crochet. We're gonna chain one, get a little bit more yarn. <laughs> so we're gonna, we chained one and now we look for the next hole right here. And we're gonna go into the hole and make a single crochet. So now it's super easy. You're just gonna do your chain ones and make your single crochets in your chain one spaces, which will make little holes all the way across. And I'll meet you at the end. All right, so we've done our chain one single crochet in the chain one space all the way across. And we have one stitch left before the end, so we're just gonna do one single crochet again. And then that's it. You just keep doing that. You just keep doing that row over and over and over until you have a blanket. So remember, we're going to chain one, 
and then turn. Bloop. Make one single crochet in the first stitch. So not this loop right after the hook, but the first stitch. And we're going under both of those V's because that's not a chain one space. So we make our first single crochet and then we're going to chain one. Find our first little hole where our chain one space was for the previous one. Make a single crochet right in that hole. And you just keep going. I have faith in you. I know you can do it. So for my example here, that's all I did over and over and over. Um, every three inches, I would change colors and I would do one row in this dark blue color. All you do to change colors at the end of your row, here, let me get my example back out here. So back here, when we finished this, at the end of this row here, what I would have done to change the color is just cut my yarn and then started uh, picking up the new yarn with my second row. So super easy, I know you can do it. Uh, like I said, every three inches, I would do one row of a different color and that's how I got my little stripes. If you want to do a border like I did, all you're going to do is once you've finished, you're going to go all the way around the border in a different color doing single crochets into each stitch and each row. So this is the side. So each row I would do one single crochet. Say I have made my entire blanket. This is all I need. I've reached the end of my row. I have not done a chain one yet and I'm ready to be done. What you're going to do to finish your crochet, you're going to take your scissors, mine look like unicorns, and we're going to cut, cut your yarn. Leave yourself a bit of a tail, but go ahead and just go ahead and cut it. So now that we have our yarn cut, you're going to yarn over and pull it through your loop all the way through. Take your tail and just gently tug it until your knot tightens and that's it. That's how you finish your crochet piece. So now if you wanted to do the border, you would just pick up another color, go into each stitch here and then go around the corners, go into each row on the bottom and then you would just finish it up the same way with snipping the yarn and pulling it through. And now, you know how to crochet. For our knitting demonstration, I'm going to be using the size 10 bamboo circular needles from Clover. And I'm going to be using the same big twist value yarn from the crochet demonstration. So first we're going to make our slip knot. So you're going to find the tail of your yarn. I'm using it from the center, but there's also one on the side that you can pull. So for the long tail cast on, you're gonna need obviously a long tail of yarn hanging off. So we're gonna take some yarn, take some more yarn, and then we're gonna do it, make our slip knot here. Um, if you're making your blanket and you want it to be pretty big, you're going to need a, a pretty long tail. So for your long tail cast on, if you're using straight needles, um, the way to know that you have enough yarn in your tail is to just start wrapping it. So each wrap will be one stitch. My blanket that is 21 inches square, I used 82 stitches. So if you want, you can count out to 82 or just kind of do it until you feel like it's big enough, but each wrap will be one stitch. However, since I'm using our circular needles for this demonstration, um, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and that's okay too. Always go with too much yarn than not enough yarn because then you gotta start over. All right, so I'm going to make another slip knot. So this side is my tail. This side is attached to my ball. So um, we're going to hold the tail in our palm, make a peace sign, wrap the yarn around the peace sign, make sure to overlap. Oh, need a little bit more yarn here. Make sure to overlap, flip it over. Our active yarn is on the bottom. Push it up into that little loop that goes around the peace sign. Let go of the peace sign, but hold on to your tail. Gently pull, and we have the stretched out loop. Put your needle inside of the loop, and pull your yarn, and there you go. We have our slip knot. 
so now that we have our slip knot done, we're going to start our cast on process. So like I said, this is the long tail cast on method. So this side is attached to our skein. This side is our long tail. Thumb and forefinger of the opposite hand go through that V. All of our other fingers are going to grab both of the yarn tails. So I have both of the yarn tails here in my fingers. Spread your thumb and your forefinger out real wide and then bring your yarn down. So we're gonna go under this bottom loop and then grab this top loop and pull it through. Drop everything and gently pull to make a stitch. So for the stitch that I'm going to teach you, it is just the basic knit, knit stitch and repeated over and over, it makes this kind of a fabric which is called garter stitch. So the nice thing about this is that we don't need any particular number of stitches. It doesn't need to be odd, it doesn't need to be even, it can be however many you want. Um, what I did for my blanket, which is um, a 20 inch square, is I loosely cast on about as many stitches as I thought I would need and then I stretched out my circular needle and I laid it against a ruler and the stitches roughly reached about 20 inches so then I just started knitting. Remember, we don't need to be exact, exact, exact. So I'm just going to cast on a few more stitches um, just so I will have enough to show you how to do your knit stitch. So here we go. All right, so I've made some stitches. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my long tail to be less long. All right, so in order to count your stitches, you're literally just going to count each loop that is on your needle. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I have 18 stitches here and now I'm going to teach you how to start knitting. So you're going to hold your needle like this. So you're going to have the one with your stitches in your left hand and then your blink needle in your right hand. If you are left-handed, it will be a little bit different for you, but there are left-handed tutorials here on YouTube that can help you with that. So I like to push my stitches up a little bit just so that they're a little bit more accessible to the tip of my needle. So you're going to take your fresh needle, your right hand needle, and we're going to go through this first loop. I'm going to go from front to back into the first side of this loop. So front to back, so you can see here, I've only gone through that loop that is facing us this way. So front to back, and now make sure, because this has gotten me several times <laughs> with the long tail cast on, make sure that you find the side of the yarn that is attached to your skein. See, because I have the tail hanging down too. So make sure you get the, the side of the yarn that's attached to your skein. And we're going to go around the back of that first needle, the right hand needle. So we're gonna go back to front. I'll do it again. So front to back, back to front. So I like to hold that yarn in place a little bit. You don't have to be real rough with it, just kind of gently hold it so it doesn't move. And now we're going to pull that yarn 
through with our right hand needle. And then we're going to pull that whole stitch off of the left needle. So now you've made one stitch. So the next stitch, so front to back. Remember, I'm only going through that first front loop, so front to back. And then take your yarn back to front, only around the right needle, pull that loop through, and then pull that whole stitch off of your left needle. So we'll do one more together. So we're going to do front to back. Take your yarn back to front, pull your loop through, and then pull that loop off. So I'm going to continue knitting every stitch in this row, and then I'll show you what to do when you reach the end. All right, so we've reached our last stitch on the needle. We're going to knit it just like every other stitch. So front to back, yarn back to front, pull through, pull that loop off. So now all of our stitches have gone from our left needle to our right needle. We're going to drop the left needle, or if you're using straight needles, just gently put it down, and you're going to transfer the right needle to the left hand, and then your left needle to your right hand. So we've just reversed it. We now have all of our new stitches in our left hand and then the right hand needle is blank. So we're going to do another row of just knit stitches. That's what's great about the garter stitch. All it is is the knit stitch. You just knit every stitch back and forth, back and forth, and it'll make these great little ridges. And then if you want to change colors and do little stripes, so I've done skinny stripes to change my colors. Um, the skinny stripes, you're going to change your color of your yarn and then just knit two rows. So one whole row and then one whole row back. And then you're gonna change back. So each skinny stripe is two rows of knitting. So to start our new row, we're going to insert our needle from front to back. And then this side is nice because we don't have to worry about, oh, we gotta make sure we're not grabbing our tail, that we're grabbing the yarn from the skein because that's all we have to work for at this point. <laughs> because that's all we have to work with at this point. So we're going to go back to front. And you see, I like to loop my yarn around my pointer finger just because that's more comfortable for me and it's easier for me to keep hold of the yarn that way. So pull that loop through and then pull that stitch off the left needle. So we're just gonna keep knitting every stitch. So we're gonna knit all the way back. I don't know if you could see while I was doing that row, but when I get into the knitting, all of my fingers get involved and these ones kind of help push the stitch off and my wrist starts flicking to help, um, to help get the yarn around easier. Um, so that's perfectly okay. I mean, you'll find your own knitting style and what is comfortable and what works for you. All right, so we've knitted a second row. And as you can see, our little lumpy bumpies are starting to form, which is really nice. So once again, we're going to switch the right needle to the left hand and the left needle to the right hand. So you're just gonna keep doing this back and forth until your blanket is the length that you want it. So we're going to pretend for a second that this is the length that I want my blanket. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to finish it off. So finishing off in knitting is called casting off. So I'm going to teach you just a basic cast off. So, you know, we learned the long tail cast on, now we're going to learn how to cast off. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to knit two stitches. So one, two. And I like to keep these kind of loose so I don't pull them as tight as I would if I was just regular knitting. So I have two stitches on the right hand needle. I'm going to take the tip of the left hand needle and take the very first stitch that I made and I'm going to pull it over and off of the right hand needle. So I'll show you. So see, I'm going into the first stitch. Here is my second stitch and I'm going to pull the first stitch over and off. Make sure that you keep hold of that second stitch. So now I only have one stitch on this right hand needle. So I'm going to knit one more. So I have two stitches on the right hand needle again. I'm going to take that furthest stitch and pull it over and off. And you're just going to keep doing this. Just knit one. So as soon as you have two stitches on that right hand needle, you're going to do the pulling it, the first one over and off. So let me do a few and then I will show you what it looks like. All right, so over, whoops, grabbing some extra yarn, over and off. And then if you can see here, it gives you like a row of V's at the top of your work. So it's a very clean looking cast off, which is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and cast off every stitch in my row, and then I'll show you what to do when you reach the very end. All right, so we have one stitch left on our left needle. So I'm going to knit that and then cast off. So we will only have, we will only have one stitch left on our right needle when we're done. At this point, I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to leave a tail. I'm going to use my little unicorn scissors and we're going to cut the yarn here. So I have one stitch left on the needle and I have, get that one out of there. And I have a cut tail of yarn and I'm just going to yarn over and then just pull that through your stitch all the way through. I'm going to gently pull the tail until that stitch tightens and gives us a knot. So here is your cast off row. You see those nice clean V's? And then we have our um, ridges of garter stitch, which you know hopefully you'll have way more ridges than just my little one. And then on the bottom we have our clean long tail cast on. Okay, so now you have all the basics you need to know to get started knitting and crocheting blankets for those shelter animals. Happy crafting!